Welcome back to another unscripted tutorial. Today we're going to be taking a look at a oscillating graphene animation, though you could do this with cubes or triangles or any connected geometry that you want. Uh, before I get going on this, I'm going to say that recently Derek Elliott of Dirk.com has put out a very similar tutorial for something like this using cubes. I want to do it with graphene. It's a really cool effect. I'm going to do much of the same thing that he did, but just a little bit differently. I like these unscripted sessions because it's an opportunity to get a little bit away from some of the science and the real bare bones style of my other tutorials and discuss something a little bit more along the lines of a fun graphic effect and how you could do that or apply that if you're interested. So without further ado, let's get started. We're going to go ahead and delete the default cube. I'm going to hit Shift A, add in a plane, S5, just to scale that up, and I'll right click and I will subdivide this by about 20 times. I'm happy with that. Will F3, I have dual mesh loaded up, convert to dual mesh right there. If you can't find this, you need tissue to be installed as an add on. And from there, I'll number pad into top view, A to select everything, R, Z, 45 degrees, S, Y, 0 0.6. Just like that, we have graphene. I can already tell that I'm probably going to start over just because I'm not really happy with how big this is. I'd like this to be a bigger graphene sheet. In fact, no, you know what? This is actually fine. This is totally fine. So the trick is I want to select all of these cubes. I'm going to do that by hitting face select and then alt a deselect drag out the box that I'm kind of after. I said cubes, but they're really hexagons. And then I'm just going to invert this selection with control I, X to delete, and we'll delete the faces. Uh, a little bit preemptive here perhaps, but I'll tab out of edit mode and start setting up my camera with control, alt, and zero. And this is what I was sort of talking about. It's a little bit smaller than I would want for this effect, but we'll just scale that up and go from there. Then I will control A and apply that scale. I'm gonna tab right back into edit mode, go ahead, select everything, making sure it's with the faces, and then F3 for the search, and we are going to use Edge Split. And if you've followed Derek's tutorial, I really cannot endorse Derek Elliott strongly enough. His channel is excellent, especially if you're interested in materials, animations, product design. Go check out his stuff. It's really, really fantastic. I've learned so much from him. But basically, you're going to Edge Split this, hit the period key, and come down to Individual Origins. Then S to scale, and just drag that in ever so slightly. I tend to like that as an effect. Now, the way that I'm doing this, and it's a little bit differently in Derek's tutorial, he extrudes everything down. That's fine. I like to use the solidify modifier instead, and I'll show you why in hopefully not that long. But we're just going to drag that thickness up. And the other thing I'm going to do, because I have a fondness for smooth edges, is to add in a bevel modifier, bring that offset down to 0 0.02. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, maybe a little bit bigger, 0 0.01. Sorry, 0.01 with two segments, and we'll right click and shade smooth. Now, the thing that I like about this is that everything has a degree of uniformity, and because it's a solidify modifier, right now everything is technically still an individual face. And that's going to come in handy when I apply materials later. I'm not really looking for a side view where we would have to deal with a kind of gradient in the texture. I'm going to be looking at this from the top up here. And so what matters to me is what color these faces are and from a perspective angle. So right now you can see these all look identical. Perfect. Let's go ahead, grab that, and we're just gonna come down to Object Data Properties, and for Normals we will Auto Smooth. You can see I'm gonna get rid of some of those interesting shadows. I think that I actually want this bevel to be just a little bit bigger. Maybe not that big. Um, Something of a compromise, 0 0.025. There we go, that's perfect. That's what I wanted. And now you'll you're going to see what I mean. I'm going to achieve the wave effect that is sort of the goal of this tutorial by simply coming to the modifiers and adding in a wave modifier. If I come down the timeline and hit play, hopefully this will actually all be recorded without causing trouble, but you can see I've got this great wave. If I turn off either of the X or Y direction, I can propagate that wave one way or the other, which is quite neat. But the real effect that I want is to simply turn off both and keep cyclic. And now you can see this whole thing is jumping up and down. I'm going to exploit that jumping and also the fact that this is all still one object with only a single plane of geometry because of the solidify, and I'm going to use vertex groups. 
to make each of these kind of jump up and down like little pistons. So we'll tab into edit mode, deselect everything with Alt-A, come down to the object data properties, and then three for face select, and simply select random. I'm going to drop this percent from 50 to probably more like 15. I think that's good. And we'll add in a group. I'm going to call this group one, which is a very creative name. I will assign those vertices, come back to the modifier properties, and for the wave modifier, I'll apply group one as the vertex group. Now, when I tab out of edit mode, you can see only some of these are going up and down. We're going to drop this speed to about 0.15, change. Actually, no, I'll keep it that way for now. We'll reset this timeline, and now you can see just these specific faces are bouncing up and down. Awesome. But if I want a few more of them to bounce up and down and maybe a little bit of a distribution, I can have that as well. I'm going to do that by adding another wave modifier, unchecking the X and the Y again, keep that open, and we'll tab into edit mode. We'll Alt-A to deselect everything, making sure that we're still on face select. We will again select random. This time it's a different seed. That's great. We're going to add in another vertex group, this one being very creatively named group 2. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to come up to group one and we're going to remove anything that's in group one or that we've currently selected with this new random selection from group one. That way the two modifiers won't interact with each other. And now we'll come down to group two and we will assign all of these to group two. Once we've done that, we can come back to our modifier properties again. For the vertex group, we'll now choose group two. And now, just to make this a little more interesting, we'll put an offset of five so this modifier will start acting five frames after this one and we'll match the speed at 0.15 yes now when we start from the beginning again we'll hit play and you can see now we've got some of these jumping up some of them jumping down just like that if we wanted to we could go ahead and keep doing this so i'll go ahead and do it one more time tab into edit mode alt a deselect everything select select random seed number three another vertex group, group three this time. And once again, I will go to group one. I will remove any of the currently selected faces from group one. I will also remove them from group two, and then I will assign them to group three. Now I'll come down to the modifier properties. I will add in a third wave modifier, tab out of edit mode. And once again, matching the speed to 0.15, tick, unchecking the X and the Y, and for the vertex group, choosing group three. This one I will offset by 2.5 frames. I don't know if it really wants to do anything other than integers, so three frames. We'll start from the beginning, and if we just go ahead and press start, you can see now they're all kind of coming up and down and up and down. And if I wanted to, I could change the life, the damping, all of these other things. I could change the height that one of these goes to versus the other. So now you can see one group is jumping up much higher than the others. And where this effect really kind of hits home and looks quite cool is when we hit zero to go into the camera view. And now you can see I have all of these little things just jumping up and down in this kind of interesting pattern. Now, as I mentioned before, one of the really nice things about using a solidify modifier instead of adding extra geometry by extruding is that I can use all of these vertex groups very easily to affect what's going to go on with just these faces. It also means that if I wanted to, you know, I could look at these and say, well, I really, really want this specific face to jump up with group three. Then I can just go and check group three by, or group one by saying, what's in group one, select all of those. What's in group two, select all of those. And now I can see that face is not in any, either of those groups. Perfect, so I'll assign it to group three. Tab out, now I can see that that new face is doing exactly what I want, which is fantastic, but, in addition to all of those lovely little perks, because these are all individual faces that are just being extruded down, anything that is on this face will share the material throughout the entirety of that solid. And what that means most clearly is if we come down to materials and add in a new material, we'll make one that is white and we'll just do a kind of domino effect here. So we'll just call this white and we'll bring the value all the way up and we'll make another one and we'll call this if we could ever get it to work, we'll call this black. And now, if I want, right now, tab into material preview, you're still, you will see that they are all white, but if I tab into edit mode, and I want to, I can now assign 
any of these faces that I want. I'm just going to select a few with shift to be black. And now not only are they black, but the entirety of that column is black. And so coming up into the perspective of the camera and deselecting everything in the scene, you can see I can now press up or press go rather, and I see some of them jumping up, some of them jumping down. If I wanted all the ones that are moving in a specific group together to be the same color, I can easily do that by saying I'd like everything in group one to be black. I will simply go to the vertex groups, select everything in group one, come down to the materials, and assign black to group one. Now, coming back into camera view, if we hit play, boom, there we go. All of the group one columns will move together. And this is a great approach. You can apply these same modifiers to, say, just a lattice of cubes. You could apply it to triangles if you wanted to that are all interconnected. Using Solidify, it's a quick and easy way to set this thing up. And then um, from there, do whatever you fancy doing with it. If you are interested, I'll probably throw one of these up on Instagram at some point as the graphene hexagons as a set of interesting little cubes, perhaps in a rainbow. It's just something that fun that you can have a great time with. Once again, uh, just saying Derek.com or Derek Elliott rather on YouTube, fantastic tutorials. So thank you for making the work that you do. Uh, it inspired this tutorial to some extent, along with the absolutely amazing animation reel of um, Ella Marshenko, who does fantastic scientific visualization. You can see here I've thrown one last modifier on this wave that is going to actually act on all of these. So now not only do you have columns jumping up and down, but you have a wave propagating throughout all of that. And before this tutorial stretches on any longer with this extremely messy animation, we'll call it quits there. So as always, thanks for coming out. If you learned anything or you found this entertaining or useful, consider subscribing, sharing with your friends and colleagues. Go check out Derek.com and Ella Marshenko's work. They're both fantastic. And have yourself a great old day.